Dear students, in this module, I will continue to elaborate on the loops, which are a type of secondary structures in the overall organization of the proteins. The loops are known to dictate the overall structure of the proteins because they bring together various other secondary structures such as the alpha helices and the beta sheets. Also, they are flexible as well as variable in length because they have to couple these secondary structures in different structural conformations. In this figure, I'm going to show you how a loop looks like. So here is an alpha helix for you in red. Here is an alpha helix in blue. And this portion in the middle in green is the loop. So as you can see that the alpha helix ends here and here. And for the loop, several amino acids, they come together and they constitute the loop. Similarly, if there were to be a beta sheet here, then you could imagine another loop connecting this alpha helix to the beta sheet as well. So this is how these loops, they come in the middle of alpha helices, beta sheets, and they allow them to join together. Okay, some properties of these loops. So these loops are essentially comprising of charged amino acids or polar amino acids. The reason for this is that these loops, they tend to constitute active sites in the proteins and therefore they need those amino acids as part of themselves which are able to interact with other proteins and polar amino acids do exactly that as well as the charged amino acids. So as I just mentioned that since these loops are part of active sites, this characteristic is very important to note. Here I show you the list of amino acids that are charged or polar and these are typically found in the loops within the protein structures. So if you see a lot of these amino acids in the protein backbone, then you can estimate that this protein structure will be a loop. Now there are various types of loops. For instance, the hairpin loop. The hairpin, it typically joins the two anti-parallel beta sheets. And therefore, if a beta sheet is going in this direction, a hairpin loop will join it with a different beta sheet in order for the beta sheet to take a turn. In other words, these are the, such loops are also called the turn loops. The turn loops may just be having two amino acids, but there are other loops which may have three, four, or even five amino acids. So they are bigger and therefore more, more flexible. Also, these loops can be classified into families and one can study these loops in detail by looking at which family a loop belongs to. And in conclusion, the loops are the third type of protein secondary structure and they are very useful because they bring together the secondary structures such as alpha helices and beta sheets. And also, while they bring these secondary, other secondary structures together, they constitute active sites or functional sites in the protein. 